Morning everyone. If you were watching part one yesterday, you'll know that this week I'm talking about European badges. So today I'm going to use my badger skeleton that I've got here to talk about some amazing adaptations that badgers have and also hopefully learn a bit about the life history of this particular individual as well. So I'll start with the skull. Badgers have this really long snout-like skull and you can see all the ridges on the top of the skull completely fused together. The first thing you might notice is this distinctive ridge on the top. This is called the sagittal crest and is where the main chewing muscles attach. This crest is actually developed as the badger grows and the chewing muscles develop, uh, which means they aren't found in young badgers and uh, only in adults. In fact, in very old males, this crest can grow up to 1.5 centimetres in height. So by looking at the skull of this individual, we can be fairly sure that this is, was an adult. It's hard to tell apart male and female badgers when they are alive. However, studies have been put forward uh, showing several different features that can help sex them. Uh, these are skull size, sagittal crest size and canine teeth size. It's thought that all of these features are bigger in males. By comparing this individual to online records, the sizes of all three of these uh, indicators, so the skull size, the sagittal crest and the canine teeth, indicate that this was an adult female. This is definitely speculative, it's just based on what I've seen from other images. So if anyone has any thoughts on this, uh, do let me know. Now let's look at the teeth. So some of them won't stay in uh, unsupported now, because when they were being cleaned up, the connective tissue that holds them in place broke down. It's worth noting that the teeth are found all the way around the mouth. This is the classic arrangement for omnivores and carnivores. If you look at some herbivore skulls, like something like sheep, uh, it's a very different mouth shape. Um, so in this individual, the incisors you can see are quite chiselled. Uh, the canines are very prominent and pointed, and the molars are uh, quite broad, uh, well adapted for, for grinding up food as well. Um, this all points to an omnivorous diet. So badgers are traditionally carnivorous, but the European badger has developed a very varied diet of animals and plant matter as well. The remaining teeth of this individual are in good condition. Um, so very old badgers will have chipped and holy teeth, um, which suggests this one wasn't, um, whilst being an adult, wasn't quite as old as it perhaps could have been. So moving on to the jaw, badgers have this really large bit at the ends of the jawbone called the mandibular condyles. These connect the jaw all the way to the jaw muscles through these long cavities in the skull. It gives badgers an incredibly strong bite, um, which allows them to crunch through uh, things like bone. These condyles also reduce jaw movement and thus the risk of dislocation as well. So as such, the lower jaw of a badger skull can't fall out. So it's a really good way of distinguishing it from things like foxes, because in badgers, uh, this lower jaw won't fall out, whereas in foxes, it will. The eye holes are found here. You'll notice they have these forward facing eyes as seen in all carnivorous mammals. However, their eyes are small and not particularly good despite them being nighttime foragers. But in evolutionary terms, with so much time spent underground, it would definitely be impractical to have uh, larger eyes. It's worth uh, pointing out as well that badgers have a third eyelid. Uh, this protects the eyes from dirt and dust while they're digging in their sets. What their eyes lack, their sense of smell certainly makes up for. So if we take a closer look at the nose, you might just be able to see it here. Um, this thin web of bone on the inside. If you can't see that, I'll put a clearer image up uh, over the top of this video. These thin bones are called turbinals. They basically serve to increase the surface area of the tissue responsible for registering odours. If you laid out all these turbinals, it's thought that it would cover an area about the size of an A5 piece of paper, which is a massive area for smelling. I've got this comparison here. So this piece of paper represents all the turbinals in our noses and covers about an area of three centimetres squared. And this shows you just how sensitive badger noses really are. So lastly, for the skull, you can see the ear canal of the badger here. They're thought to have really good hearing, though as burrowing animals, they aren't too prominent on the top of the head. Instead, badgers have some fairly effective guard hairs in the ear canals. Uh, which prevent dirt getting into the ears uh, while they're digging, the same way as the eyes had that third eyelid, it's just another level of protection for them whilst they're underground. 
So that's all I've got time for today. Uh, in tomorrow's video, I'll finish up looking at some more of these amazing badger adaptations and talk a little bit more about how you can get involved in badger conservation too. As usual, if you've enjoyed this video, please like and share it and follow the Facebook and Twitter pages with hashtag social distancing zoologist. See you tomorrow. Bye for now.